Howl ye, the day of the Lord is near. The day of the Lord, it's mentioned 25 times in the Bible. And that's specific in the King James Bible. Another 27 times or so, it's referenced to that day, speaking of the day of the Lord. And there are a number of others as well. So it's pretty important. What is the day of the Lord? The day of the Lord is a time of darkness, a time of vengeance, of fierce wrath and anger. This is the day of the Lord. The Lord is angry. The Lord is frustrated, maybe more so than he was in the time of Noah, when he grieved that he'd even made man. So this is a day that is coming and coming very, very soon. Why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this so that you who know and believe like me that there is a pre-tribulation rapture, we're going to be out of here before the great and terrible day of the Lord. And there's nothing great about it other than it is grand, not great as in good. And it says the great and awesome day of the Lord. That doesn't mean awesome like, oh yeah, cool. It means awesome is like awestruck. It's a horrible time. There will be no time like it evermore, and there's never been a time like it. And the beginning of that starts with the tribulation, what we call the tribulation. It's the 70th week of Daniel. And I'm telling you this, hoping that you will be able to show this to your friends or tell them about it, because we're looking for the rapture. We're looking for the harpazo, the catching up. Jesus catching us up into the clouds before the great and terrible day of the Lord. And that's great for us, but those that are left behind, it's horrific. I mean, there is no word that covers it, it's so bad. And I can tell you about that, and I probably will go over some of the things in the book of Revelation that tells you about it and believe them. It's not just a fairy tale. It is true and real and it's coming and coming very soon. And that is the 70th week of Daniel. So the day of the Lord begins with the 70th week of Daniel. And that 70th week, primarily, Daniel, what is that? Jesus points to it. It's about the Jews because they rejected their Messiah. They rejected him because they were looking for a king to come in and rule and reign. Well, he is going to, but they missed the verse or ignored the verses that talked about him coming as a suffering servant to give himself, to give himself up. He would be a sacrifice. They didn't want any part of that. They wanted a, a king to rule and reign, that they would rule and reign with him. Well, that, that's going to happen, but they have to receive Jesus, Yeshua. They have to know that He is Yeshua, is the Messiah. And Jesus says, He'll not come back again until they do that. Until they say, blessed is He who comes in the name of the Lord, Yeshua, Hamashiach, Jesus, the Messiah. And they will do that, but it's going to take a lot to get them to do that. So the tribulation, or Daniel's 70th week, is first and foremost to push Israel to the wall, to squeeze them. It's going to be a horrific time for all those on earth, not just the Jews, but primarily it's to get them to come to their knees and pray for their Messiah and re realize that Yeshua is their Messiah. The second thing it is the wrath poured out on a Christ-rejecting and unbelieving world. That, that just like in the time of the flood, God brought wrath on a wicked, wicked world. And I don't know, I can't, th this world is so wicked, so corrupt, so chaotic, so evil now, I can't imagine it being worse than this. But the times are going to get worse. I'm just praying that we are harpazo, that's the, the Greek for rapturo, which we get rapture from. And yeah, the word rapture is not in the Bible. A lot of people tell you, oh, it's not in the Bible. There, there's no 
word rapture in the Bible. Of course, it's not in your Bible because you read the English. If you read the Latin Bible, you would see rapturo, or rapio, is where we get the word rapture from. And it means to catch up. And that's why we have caught up in it. And the original word is, the original word in the Greek is harpazo. That's the one I like to use most of the time, harpazo. And Jesus is gonna take those that are his out before, just like Enoch was translated before the flood. And one of the early church fathers, uh, I think it was Eusebius, it, it might have been Irenaeus, but I think it was Eusebius that, that I might get him wrong, but one of them in the, in the second or third or fourth century, he used that and he, he wrote about that, the parallel of Enoch being taken out before the wrath of the flood. And Jesus says, it will be just as in the days of Noah. And then in Luke, he adds to it the next verse. He says, it'll be as in the days of Lot. And the reason I think he did that, especially in Luke, is he's, he's driving it home saying, it's going to be like this. And what, what part of that are we looking at? Well, the two things that those have in common, the two uh, uh, things that, that are the same and both of them are that the wrath came after Noah was separated. The wrath came of fire and brimstone after Lot set foot out of the city. The very same day that Lot set foot out of the city is when the fire and brimstone came. And the day that Noah set foot into the ark and closed the door is when the floods came. So again, I'm saying this so that, not that, I mean, we are happy. We're, we're looking for the Lord in the clouds. We're looking for him every day. There's so many all across the internet, all around the world. They're looking for him coming soon. But really, any of you or friends of yours that don't know, that are not believers, how ye? They need to know what's coming. We'll talk about that soon in the book of Revelation. And I'll tell you what it's happening. You do not want to be here.